Guys, it is time for some in-depth digging into the new firmware. Thing of it is, there is so much new stuff, I really don't even know where to start. Now, I took a look at a lot of the posts after the new firmware came out, and it seemed like the biggest problem that most guys were having was installing the firmware. So I made that video about backing up, installing the firmware, and installing the Pro Control apps. Okay, then it seemed like the next problem guys were having was with the third-party IR speaker impedance curves. They just didn't get what it's about. For example, John N. posted this. I have no idea what I'm looking for for this third-party IR feature. I've installed the firmware, updated the app. I have IRs I installed before that I use. What's different? Well, that's a fair question. IR usage is still not a big favorite amongst most guys, and there are other guys that simply don't know what an IR is or what it's used for. As I mentioned in a prior video, IR stands for impulse response. There are all sorts of IRs available for acoustic guitars, for reverbs, for guitar speakers, etc. For this video, we are focusing on guitar speaker cab IRs. Now, Fender has created an excellent cab system for the Tone Master Pro, and most users probably have no need to go beyond that at all. Now, they might not know it, but what they're doing when they work with the cab system, they're choosing IRs. But let's just say that you used to have a particular speaker cabinet that you used all the time, and that particular speaker cabinet is not part of the cab system on the Tone Master Pro. What are your options? Well, what most guys would do is they would search the IR vendors to see if anyone has made an IR pack for that particular guitar speaker cabinet. Okay, so now you are all ready to rebuild that fantastic rig that you had in the past. The amp head that you had, it's already in the Tone Master Pro. And now you've installed the IRs from the IR pack that you bought for your particular guitar speaker cab and you put them together and it sounds nothing like what you expect. Why? Here's where speaker impedance curves come in. Roughly speaking, a speaker impedance curve affects how the power amp responds to the attached speakers. So if you have a third-party IR that is designed around a 4x12 Marshall Greenback cab, you need the correct speaker impedance curve to tell the power amp model how to behave with that particular IR. Jason Stillwell from Fender posted an excellent explanation on the Discord server. Let's talk about speaker impedance curves for a moment. There's an interaction between the complex impedance of a speaker cabinet, which is a mix of resistance, capacitance, and inductance, and the output impedance of a tube power amp, also complex. It affects the frequency response as well as dynamic aspects of the power amp. That combination of two power amp slash output transformer and a speaker cab produces a unique speaker impedance curve. Without a speaker impedance curve, either real or modeled, an amp model will sound a bit dull and one-dimensional, typically lacking both thump due to no low-end speaker resonance and high-end. Our combo or half-stack amp models are aware of which cabinet you've paired with them. So an appropriate speaker impedance curve is automatically selected. When using one of our amp models with a third-party IR, the amp model has no knowledge of what IR you've selected. So to help you get close, we've provided a variety of different speaker impedance curve options. They may not precisely match the amp slash cab pairing you've selected, but they will give you some additional tonal options. Choose the one that is most appropriate or sounds best. If your IR is of a 4x12 with Celestian speakers, your best bet for accuracy is choosing one of our 4x12 speaker impedance curve options. If your IR is for a 1x12 Jensen equipped cabinet, choose appropriately for best results. Now, prior to the 1.3 firmware upgrade, if you used a third party IR in the Tone Master Pro, it had a generic speaker impedance curve applied to it whether you wanted it or not, there was just no choice. And we had no idea what speaker cab it was from. So let's just say it's a speaker impedance curve for a 1x12 inch Fender cab. 
Now, what do you think is going to happen when you use that speaker impedance curve on a 4x12 Marshall cab? Dude, <laughs> that's not going to sound good. I mean, it might sound seriously downright wonky. Now, you may or may not have heard about this, but when the Tone Master Pro first came out, a number of content creators, including me, did a bunch of comparison videos to see how it stood up to Fractal, Helix, and other modelers. John from Sonic Drive Studio had done a comparison video of real amp heads against the Tone Master Pro's versions. His initial testing said that the Tone Master Pro came up short. He used the same speaker cab IR so we could hear the differences of the amp heads. But there was a problem that compromised his tests. He was able to use the correct speaker impedance curve when he used his real amp head, but the Tone Master Pro didn't have third-party IR speaker impedance curves at the time. So all that he could use was the generic built-in speaker impedance curve. And of course, it didn't sound the same. John just posted a new video where he compares the Tangerine and Solo amp heads against their real-world counterparts. He was able to find the right speaker impedance curves on the Tone Master Pro, and the Tone Master Pro sounds practically identical. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference in a band setting. I'll post a link to John's new video in the description. Now, I'm not a fan of metal, but I love John's demos. Check them out. But yes, now we have 26 speaker impedance curves to use with third-party IRs, and hopefully there'll be even more. Now, if you're still confused as to what a speaker impedance curve does, Let's just say that it's the connector between the power amp model and the third-party IR. You want that connection to be as streamlined, as customized as possible, because then the amp and speaker are working together in the best way possible. And you'd want nothing less than that. Am I right? All right, let me fire up the Pro Control app, and we'll give the speaker impedance curves a try. All right, guys, so what I've done is I've created two test presets. One is just the orange half stack stock, and the other is the orange amp head with an IR. Now I'm using my Fender FMT Telecaster humbucker position bridge pickup. This is what the orange stock sounds like. Now here's what the orange head sounds like with the Ohnhammer Classic Rock 57 IR, but I'm using no speaker impedance curve. That sounds like this. So if you switch back and forth, it is pretty evident which one is using the fender cab and which one is using the IR with no speaker impedance curve. Okay guys, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a loop that I made a minute or so ago and we're going to go through the different third-party IR speaker impedance curves and you'll see what a difference they make.
So the 4x12 brick greenback wins the speaker impedance curve contest. And that should show you how speaker impedance curves can change the sound of a preset. Or, if you want to say, can change the sound of an amp in a cab setup. Third-party IRs can give you an amazing amount of cabs if that's what you like. But remember, you need to pair them with the right speaker impedance curve. Now, of course, there's no law that says you have to install it with the right speaker curve. You can install any speaker curve you want, and you will not get a ticket for illegal use of speaker impedance curve. So that being said, go have fun with the IRs and the speaker impedance curves and find a match that you like. Now, usually the closest match will sound the best, but sometimes you might get surprised. So go out there and have some fun with IRs and speaker impedance curves. Let me know how it turned out for you. I'd love to hear about it. And if you're still here, thank you so much for stopping by and sticking around. I really do appreciate it. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop me a comment here and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I will help in whatever way that I can do it. Now this coming Friday, I'll have all new content. You don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, have a great week. I'll be talking with you again on Friday.